Well, good evening, folks. Oh, come on. Good evening, folks. All right. Can you believe it's almost Christmas? Boy, this year just hmm, went by. I cannot believe how fast the time goes. But I guess, uh, you know, my mama used to say, the older you get, the faster it goes. So I, I think I'm believing her on that. The older I get, the more time goes by so fast. Um, so what I, what I was doing today, Pastor, I kept asking God, what, what do you want me to talk about? Because there was just really nothing coming at that point. And um, so I'm like, man, Lord, what, 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 you know? And, uh, and he said, just, just share what's going on with you. And I said, okay, I, can, I think I can rattle a little bit about that a little bit. So uh, let's pray and then we'll, we'll get into it. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. Lord, I pray that our hearts and minds be open and may we receive the engrafted word of God. And may we not only be hearers of the word, but let us be doers, Father, Lord, because we in this season, Father God, we're so thankful as Rachel sang in the choir, sang a little bit earlier about Emmanuel, God with us. What a season to be in, not only on just Christmas, but every day Emmanuel is with us. And we're so grateful for that, Lord. So have your way, Lord, right now in Jesus name. Amen. So uh, earlier today, I was at a funeral. My, my mom's brother passed away, and uh, he's like kind of one of my favorite uncles, you know, real cool dude. Uh, I remember in high school, because my dad was always off and on, being in the military, so on and so forth, uh, he would come over to the house, and we would just sit on the porch, and I would just ask questions. You know, being a kid, you know, and in that awkward stage of high school, and girls and that, 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 all the stuff that comes with that, you know, and I would just ask him questions and he was just so cool and he'd just lay it out for me. And I said, okay, because he was a very no nonsense man. You know, he just, but one of the facts that I did not realize, I knew he went to college, but he went to college to be a chemist. I had no idea. And I think both of my uncles, I had two uncles that went to college to be a chemist, even though they never pursued that as a career, but I didn't know they went to college for that, so a brilliant man. So within my frustration, I kept asking God, Lord, okay, what are we gonna talk about here, <laughs> Lord? You gotta give me something. So as he began to tell me, you're gonna talk about yourself, I said, well, what am I gonna talk about, you know? And he said, talk about what's going on with you. And I'm like, okay, because one of the things I kept asking God in my mind was, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about it, James chapter one, where it says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and tribulations and temptations. And I just kept asking God, how do you do that? Because I watched like, uh, okay, I'm gonna tell on myself, every now and then, or every, I can't, partic I can't remember what particular day, but every now and then these little cartoons would come on and they'll come on about certain um, saints from the past. You know, and uh, one was about martyrdom. Uh, the one was, you know, there was just different saints, you know. And I'm like, these guys were so cool when they were under extreme pressure. Now, of course, the cartoon ain't going to show all the sides where they were under pressure. But they, it had to be true that while they were going through these different types of situations, that they, it, their joy did not get rattled. And, and I'm telling you, that, that bugged me because sometimes my joy gets rattled. Can, can, can I be real about it? When I get in certain situations and I'm seeing and I'm sensing certain things in my heart and in my spirit, it just is sometimes that light just flips and I'm just a whole nother different person because I'm not, I'm not allowing my peace to take control and I'm allowing my joy to be shifted. Anybody with me ever had your joy shift when you got into something? So I kept saying, Lord, what is it? How do these guys do it? I heard about this guy. Uh, now this was wild. I thought my stuff was bad, but boy, this guy, he got it. The pastor said that the man got into some type of identity theft, went across seas, came back in the country. They arrested him and he's still in prison and they can't. And he's trying to get himself together to get out of the thing. 
and they're just having a heck of a time, you know, and but he's saying, but there is revival in every prison that he goes to. And because he's having such an effect in the prison, they kept shifting him from prisons. But every time he goes to a different prison, something will break out. So that's just telling me that even though this guy's in a rough situation, he's not letting his joy and his peace get rattled. Because he's in the midst of trials, he's in the midst of, uh, uh, of deep despair or deep, uh, just a situation that's just crazy, but yet his peace is still intact. So I say, okay, Lord, we're going to get down to the bottom of this. We're going to get down to the bottom of this. And, this and, and, and I can tell that this is on point because one of the things God kept telling me was, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. So, okay, sis, you was right on point on that. So, so number one, I had to realize that Emmanuel is always with me. Now, I understand that here, yeah, and, and I do understand that here, but then so why is my peace and my joy still getting rattled when I'm getting into a situation? Okay, so I said, okay, Lord, earlier, uh, I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with this, but uh, someone gave me this. It's a devotional, and it's called Jesus Calling. Anybody familiar with this type of devotion? And so there was one in particular where the Lord just really rocked me on this one. So I'm like, okay, well, it helped me, you know, as of recent. So I'm going to read it and hopefully it'll help someone else and I'll expound on it a little bit. Okay, so now watch this. Okay, so it says, I am the Prince of Peace. I said, ooh, okay, Lord. Now, I, I, and, and, this, and when the Lord speaks to me, I have to just talk back to him, you know, and, and say, okay, Lord, I got that. So, but I want it to become real. I want your peace to become real so that when I get into something, that thing kicks in, you know, like a turbo boost, okay? So he says, I am the Prince of Peace, but I wrote above that, but there's also a Prince of the Power of the Air. So now there's the conflict. So you got the prince of the power of the air and you have the prince of peace. Now, when I'm walking into a situation, the prince of the power of the air could already have that situation stirred up, ready to attack me. Y'all with this now? So already he's already in a situation because I'm, I'm just let me just keep it real, because I knew I knew that when I was going to this funeral today, I knew what I was going to get into. So I made sure, Pastor, I was prayed up. I made sure I was word up and I was ready because I knew that prince of the power of the air and how he works. And I knew that he was going to go before me and already have the situation already. St See, OK, OK, slow down, Will. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, so I already knew what was going to happen. I, I mean, it's just, I already know. I already know that the atmosphere was already going to be jacked up. So I needed right then and there before I got there the Prince of Peace to get in me. And then once I arrived on the situation, I need the Prince of Peace to kick in. Mm -hmm. I needed that peace. Yes. Okay, now watch it. OK, so he says, as I said to my disciples, you know, I'm the Prince of Peace. I said this to my disciples. And then he says, but I also say to you. And then I say, well, I also say to you, Willie Tillman, peace with you. I said, OK, Lord. Now, since I am your constant companion, my peace is steadfastly with you. OK, so so. OK, Lord, and, and this is how I got to process with him so I can get this. So I said, OK, Lord, so you're my constant companion. So that means that when I get out of this house and dress and go, every little thing, every little act, every little place where I stand, sit or whatever I'm doing, you're right beside me. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. See. <laughs> For all my Spanish brothers and sisters. <laughs> OK, now. He said, when you keep your focus, okay, everybody say focus. Okay. Come on, say focus. focus. Okay, now see, now watch this. If the prince of the power of the air has already gone before me, 
and I have the Prince of Peace with me, one of the things I have to do is make sure that I keep my focus on my peace. Y'all with me? I hope, I hope this is helping. I'm hoping this is going to help us now. Because what, what the situation tends to do at, with me, I, I can't speak with everybody else, but sometimes, Rachel, when I get into the situation, I'm not allowing my, I'm not focusing on my peace, so I'm actually focusing on the situation. So if I'm focusing on the situation and not focusing on my peace, then I'm out of focus. Hocus pocus, you're out of just like that. Okay, so, and I remember now, okay, well, there, we're all old enough in here to remember this. Y'all remember back in the day when we used to have the TV antennas? <laughs> Some of us still got them, okay? So that's all right, that's all right. So, so I remember as a child, you know, our, our favorite cartoon would come on, and so for some reason, the, 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 the station, whether it be the weather or whatever was going on, the station would get out of focus. So I would either me, myself, or, you know, or I'd bang my little sister and say, hey, go, go adjust the TV, you know? Big brothers, little sisters, y'all know how it goes, okay? And so what they would do is there's the, the, the knob to turn the TV, but then there's another knob on the other side or behind that knob, and you turn that knob, and that knob will adjust the focus. Okay? So if I'm out of focus or even slightly out of focus, then what I need to do, oh, watch this. Thank you, Lord. What the Holy Ghost is going to do is he's going to try to turn that knob, turn the word, turn the truth in your heart so that you can get focus on your peace. Yes. Amen? Amen. See, this is so this is so critical because I'm saying, Lord, as the time goes on, Jesus said that there will be a lot of offenses in the last days. And you just can't be running off at the mouth at everybody that offends you. You can't fight everybody that offends you. You can't get an attitude about it. You can't just sit in the corner and cry about it because that's not going to do anything. All that is going to do is just get you out of focus. But he says that I'm the Prince of Peace. I'm your constant companion. And all I need, all you need to do is when you begin to get into that situation and you sensing in your spirit. Now, not, not to say that what you're sensing is, uh, not wrong. Sometimes it could be wrong. Sometimes it could be right. But the point of it is, is not to focus on either the left or the right. He says, keep your focus on me. And this is the and this is the oppor thank you, Lord. This is the opportunity for the word to do what it's meant to do. Amen. This is the opportunity. This is a growth opportunity for the man or the woman of God. OK, everybody with me so far. Is this good? OK, OK, now watch this. OK, so it goes on to say, my peace is steadfastly with you. And when you keep your focus on me, you experience both my presence and my peace. Wow, a double whammy. Bam, bam. OK, now he says, worship me as king of kings and Lord of lords and prince of peace. Now, one of the things that I, I know that I'm having to, needing to work on is if I get into a particular situation and let's say I'm focusing on my peace, what I need to do is not only focus on my peace, but what I need to do is also worship because worship is a weapon, you know, and I and, and again, That's right. I know that here, pastor, but I'm trying to work that thing from here to here so that it becomes an experience experiential. OK, because so many times we get so caught up in the thing, you know, but that that's not it. That's not going to get it. It has to go from here to here so that when the trial comes, when the temptation comes, when the situation comes, the word would kick in. Or if the word's not kicking in, then throw up your hands and worship and say, hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Now, again, I'm learning this now. <laughs> but, 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 but 
Faith comes by hearing. So the more I say it, the more I hear it, the more my faith gets built up. Amen. Okay. so this is now this is the reason for worshiping. Amen. That's why worship is so critical. Amen. Okay. everybody good now. Here we go. Now he says he says you need my peace. Now, do we see peace as a need? Okay, that wasn't a trick question, I promise. <laughs> we need peace. We all do. And you need it each moment. Watch this. So that you can accomplish my purpose. Now, I'm going to tell you, and, and I'm just, and I haven't talked to Pastor yet, but God's been dealing with me a lot about purpose. And I, hopefully the next few sermons or whatever, however we do it, I want to talk a little bit more about that. But see, if I lose my peace, then I lose my purpose. Come on now, church. If I'm not in my peace, then the purpose can go all out the window because there is a reason why you are where you are. There's a reason why I go to work and work around the people whom I work. There was a reason why I went to that funeral today. Amen. And boy, oh, and it was late, a whole bunch of pastors up in there, pastor and a whole bunch of people. I mean, the place was just packed, you know, and and and, and you know, and I was just kind of just laid back, you know, chilling. You know, I wouldn't, you know, just. You know, and of course, uh, uh, you know, when they said there's some whalers, boy, there they was some whalers going on. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, some real whaling going on. There ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm talking about, Lisa. I mean, you know, we had to carry off my aunt, you know, five of us. You know, come on. I'll grab the leg. You grab the shin. You know, <laughs> we'll put her in the chair, you know. But, but, and, and that's all good. That's, I guess that's part of the grieving process. But. I discovered what the purpose of me being there at the end of the whole thing. Let me tell you about it. So I um, so we, we, you know, buried the body. Then, you know, of course, we went to a church and we were getting ready to get some supper. Well, I knew I had to prepare because I still haven't had anything yet. And, you know, and I'm like, Lord, what are we going to do? You know, so I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to grab me a plate. Then I'm going to go. So I, 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 I they let me pray it over the food. I grabbed my stuff and I was walking out the door. And one of my cousins and I ain't seen this cat in a long time, I mean, a long time, you know. And he pulled me on the side and he said, you know what, cuz oh, you know, and I said, yeah, what's up, man? And he said, let me tell you something. I want to encourage you right now. He said, it don't matter who comes against you, what they say about you, what they do to you. He said, let me tell you what happened. He said, they did it to Jesus first. And if they did it to him, then you in good company. And so I'm just, I'm just like, yeah! <laughs> because see, the whole time now, the whole time, I, I focused. I mean I, I mean, I made an effort to focus on the word. I tried everything to focus on the Holy Ghost. You know, I did everything which I'm supposed to do to keep my focus, to keep my peace, do what I was supposed to do as a, a, a pallbearer and all that, do my responsibilities. But the purpose, but that real purpose was that word of encouragement that came from my cousin, who I haven't seen this cat in years. And I said, wow, Lord. And that thing brought tears to my eyes as I was driving home and I was thinking about it. I said, man, Lord, that was it right there. That's a, there you go. That was a gift. And watch this. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But that particular purpose was a promotion. That was God validating my efforts and promoting me by saying this word of truth that would encourage my spirit even further. See, every trial and every test, the end of it is a promotion. And, it may, and, and I don't want to get too far in my head of myself, but promotions aren't always just monetary and it may not always be a job. It could be a spiritual promotion. Ain't that right, Pastor? Could be a spiritual promotion. So I thank, I thank God for my cousin and uh, thank you for those words that he spoke because, you know, it was out the clear blue. I was out the door getting ready to come home, getting my books. And he just said that one thing. And I'm like, wow, Lord, that's awesome. That's awesome. OK, so you have your peace. And if you have your peace, you have your purpose. OK, now watch this. Sometimes you're tempted to take. No, no, just 
Okay. Sometimes you are tempted to take shortcuts, watch this, in order to reach your goal as quickly as possible. Now, shortcuts, everybody say shortcuts. shortcuts. Come on, shortcuts. shortcuts. Now, aren't we all tempted to take the shortcuts? Come on now, everybody, every hand ought to be up. We all are tempted to take shortcuts. Amen? We all are tempted to take shortcuts because, see, we see the end. We see what we really want. And instead of holding your peace and walking in your purpose to get to the goal that you want, the enemy, which remember what I told you, the prince of the power of the air would go before you and set things up to try to not get to not the number one to upset your peace upset your purpose and then now he says instead of really going the direct route why don't you just go this way and you can get there quicker but see you're missing the blessing you're missing the blessings of holding your peace you're missing the blessing of walking in your purpose and then watch this and thirdly then you're going to miss your promotion because God wants to promote all of us he is a God that likes, just like a father, you know, well, girl, did you get all A's this? Yeah, daddy, I got all A's. Well, girl, let me slap 10 on you. Bam! Oh, and, and, and you see the child, they pray, well, man, I'm going to get me another A if I'm going to get that money. So now they, 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 so now they're equivalent, the A's, there's a reward if I get good grades. There's a reward, a kingdom reward, if we learn to do it God's way and do things God's way and not take the shortcuts because shortcuts is not kingdom. Jesus never took a shortcut. And think about it. When, when they were pressing him, who you are? Who do you say you are? Who do you say you are? Who do you say you are? And he knew the moment that he says, and I am the son of God. And he knew the moment he said that what that was going to trigger. All hell was going to break loose. And it did. But he said, but I'm not going to take no shortcuts. And in this society, we're taught to take shortcuts. If you take the shortest route, you reach your goals quicker. And that's what we're taught. But that's not always that's not the way the kingdom works, people. And that's what he was telling me, because see, watch this. Now, watch this. Let me show you how a shortcut work. Now, OK, so I get in a situation and I'm walking and Rachel offends me. So instead of taking the shortcut and getting angry with her, because see, that's a shortcut. Anger is a shortcut. Bitterness is a shortcut. Nastiness is a shortcut. Impatience is a shortcut. All these things are shortcuts. But what I should do is if I see her, instead of taking the shortcut to bitterness and the shortcut to anger, why don't I take the long route, uh, uh, get my flesh in check and say, God bless you. You see? That's the longer route, or as the sister said, that's the bigger person, but that's the longer route. But the shorter route is, hmm, who does she think? Who does she thinks she is talking to me like that? She don't know who I am talking to me like that. What's wrong with her? <laughs> See, that's, and, and, and watch this, and we get so accustomed to living lifestyles of shortcuts, okay, that when the, when the Holy, watch this, the Holy Spirit is constantly trying to fine tune your focus on your peace and on your purpose, because watch this, because he has a promotion for you, but if you, all you are is a shortcut, 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 then you out of whack, you're out of focus, you're out of purpose. And you're not going to be promoted in the spirit. Because what God, what, what is all, because he keep, this is what the Lord keeps telling me. What am I, what I'm ultimately trying to do in your life, Willie, is I'm trying to get you from uh, faith to faith, glory to glory, so that you can be effective wherever you are. You can be effective whether you're in the jungles of Africa you can be effective whether you're in the deepest, darkest prison like Paul was. You can be effective wherever you go because you understand my peace. You understand my presence. And so whenever I keep testing you and trying you and showing you these things, you're constantly being promoted, promoted, promoted. 
but it's not easy work. Sometimes it's hurtful. But I mean, but I always keep telling myself if Christianity was easy, everybody would be doing it. Amen. Amen. Okay. We're coming to the scripture here in just a moment. Uh, Rachel, I got you. I ain't forgot about you. Okay. Everybody cool. We good so far? Amen. Okay. Okay. Now watch this. Okay. So he says, uh, no taking shortcuts to reach your goals quickly. He says, watch this. He says, but if the shortcut requires turning you, uh, excuse me, but if the shortcut requires turning your back on my peaceful presence, you must choose the longer route. And then this is what I wrote. I said, whatever you turn your back from, you're turning yourself to. So if I turn my back on Rachel, then I'm turning myself towards the back wall right here. So if I choose to turn my back in that moment and take the shortcut, then I'm turning my back on Jesus. I'm turning my back on my peace. I'm turning my back on his presence. I'm turning my back on my promotion because again, I want to get to this goal very quickly. But all you have to do is just turn around and turn to. Turn away from and turn to, amen, and keep walking towards the Lord. And this is how you keep your peace. This is how you keep the presence. And it's all, all of this is so critical. And, and I know for me, because I kept saying, Lord, I, I got to understand this. I, 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 and and I, I have to make sure that this thing is operational in my life because I don't want to live a life of a sourpuss. I don't want to be an old stick in the mud, you know, and y'all see me as, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly upbeat and joyful. But these past couple of weeks have been just very taxing and and very heavy. So obviously there's got to be some reason why the weight is coming upon me. And what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to get out of all of this? Because sometimes I keep asking God, what are you doing, man? What is going on here? I thought, I, I mean, I read, I read just the other day what you did for Moses and I read about what you did for this person and that person and all of these other people. So wh why, wh why are you shortchanging me? I, I know y'all don't talk like that to God because I know all y'all got it going on and y'all got it all focused and straight. But for some of us that still be on the floor groveling and trying to figure this thing out, you know, trying to keep digging through this thing so I can understand because I really want to walk in this thing. Amen. Amen. I, I truly want to walk in this. Now, here comes the scripture. Now, watch this. Uh, turn up there, Papa Rick. Uh, let me see. I got it marked here. Okay, Psalms chapter 37, Psalms 37, and verse 23 and 24, and Miss Rachel's going to read that. So Psalms, 20, thir Psalms 37, and we're going to look at verse 23 and 24. Okay, go, ma'am. That's all right. The steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord when he delights in his way and he busies himself with, ev with his every step. Next verse, please. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down. Thank you, Lord. For the Lord grasps his hand in support and upholds him. Okay. Read that one more time, Miss Rachel. <laughs> Let that sink in. Read that one more time, man. Though he falls, mm -hmm. he shall not be utterly cast down. Right. For the Lord grasps his hand right. in support and upholds him. Is that powerful or what, church? So see, this is this this is why, this is why the way we walk how we conduct our lives and how we're operating in the Holy Ghost, operating in the spirit is so critical because if we're allowing God to direct our steps, see, watch this now. And I, I just want to say this as a constant reminder, even though Paul was a powerful man, 
And even Paul, Paul did some stuff that, you know, I've yet to see in my own personal life. OK, but watch this. But Paul was still shipwrecked. Paul was still beaten with rods. Paul was still stoned to death. Well, wait a minute. How could a good God allow such a hateful thing to happen to such a good person? Because God was ordering his steps. And though probably to Paul, it looked like he was falling. It looked like he was going to crumble because it, I remember Pastor and I talked about this Sunday. He said that when he went to the province of Asia, that the heaviness of the spirit, the, the burden, the warfare was so heavy, he felt like he wanted to die. You ever been there? I can tell you, I can personally tell you, and some of us all can tell you, there's been points in my life where I just put my hand up and I said, Lord, I'm ready to go home. But the word says, though you fell down, Willie, you will not lie there, son. Though you were cast down, you will not lie there. Here, son, get on up. Thank, thank God that he stretches forth his hands to pick us up so that we can walk again. Amen. So no matter what the situation is, no matter what's going on, no matter how far you fall, it doesn't matter. He's always going to be there to stretch his hand and to pick you up. And if he's got to hold you, if he's got to support you, if he's just got to carry you, whatever it is going to do, he's going to do it. Amen. Whatever needs to be done. Amen. Isn't that the truth? And it's just like, you know, like like what I've seen several times throughout the day at this funeral. You know, some of these ladies, they were about to pass out. Some of them just threw their hands up and knees buckling and shaking. But watch this. But it was so cool to see how all the men gathered around them and the other women gathered around them to support them and help them back to the chair. So they weren't utterly cast down. They weren't forsaken in their sorrow. They weren't forsaken in their grieving. But people were there to pick them up and support and carry them. And that's what we're supposed to be for one another. Amen. Truly. So when you see somebody crumbling, when you see somebody down, when you see somebody looking like they're about to give up, then you stretch your hand, use your faith to stretch forth your hand, pick them up and support them in faith and then carry them until they're able to walk again. Amen. But you got to understand, OK, well, I got the peace. I got the presence. Amen. And I need to make sure that these things are operating in my life so that I can support the man. I can support the woman. I can support the person who is in that situation and they need your support. Amen. Because just like Jesus upholds and support us, shouldn't we do that for one another? And how prideful of me, I'm speaking to myself, Pastor. How prideful of it is for me to see my brother, to see my sister, or to, to, to be so arrogant as to have hate towards my sister when the Lord's already provided peace. Who, who am I to be arrogant? Who am I to be mad? Who am I to be upset? But these things keep coming and I keep experiencing these things in my spirit and, and I'm just sick of it. I don't want that there. I want to walk in the peace of God. And even when the ones that are closest to you stick in you like this, you know, I want to be able just to look at them and say, you know, I love you so much and be real about it. I just love you so much. I want you to know I want the best for you. And, and, and I'm not saying, I'm saying sometimes that's easier said than done because I just know, I know Willie Tillman, Rachel. <laughs> and sometimes Willie, the real, the, 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 the not saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, Willie, that, that side B, if that joker gets out, mm, I keep that joke under wraps. I try my best, Pastor. And Pastor, you know what I'm talking about. Pastor said he had to go bang on a tree a couple of times, you know. But, uh, but, isn't that, but isn't that real, though? This is why this season is so blessed. Because as the sister's saying, it's Emmanuel, God with us. Whew. 
what a season to be in right now, amen? So if Emmanuel is with me, then there ought to be, there ought to be something going on in my life that says Emmanuel is with me. There ought to be something in my life that shows that Emmanuel is not only with me, but Emmanuel is in me and coming out of me. Amen. Amen? That's the truth. Amen. Amen. Okay, let me get to this other scripture. So I want Miss Rachel to read this. Give me a second. Oh, where did I put it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay. Okay. So Papa Rick, if you turn up there to Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 is this helping anybody i mean i may i mean seriously i mean i hope that i mean i'm just saying this out of my own frustration this is this is what's been going on with willie tillman as of the past couple of weeks so i'm just i'm just being real with y'all where i'm at you know okay and you want to read that for me miss rachel that's okay you're fine mm-hmm or the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the young woman who is unmarried and a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. So he says, watch this. Walk with me along paths of peace and watch this and enjoy the journey. Amen. That's great. So I'm like, okay, Lord. I want to practice enjoying the journey. Amen. Now, again, now I'm not saying, I can't speak for y'all. I'm, like, I'm not saying that's easy, but it is doable because the Lord said so. And watch this. So, so if the woman gave birth to the, to the son of God and his name is Emmanuel, God with us. And then, Rick, if you turn to uh, chapter, I believe it's chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Ready? Yes, ma'am. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time forth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So look at all the attributes of God. Look at, look at all the, the things that he has provided. If, if you don't understand, well, Lord, you know, your word says that you are the counselor. So, Lord, I need wisdom. OK, I'm going to let me tie these two in. Thank you, Lord. Let me tie these two in. So let me, let's go to uh, James chapter one. So just think about this right here and, I, and I'll, I'll read it to myself. But James chapter one, Papa Rick. I want I want to tie these two in real quick. Okay, and let's start with verse, I think it's verse, uh, please forgive me, give me just a second. Okay, and let's start with verse 2. Let's start with verse 2. Okay. Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are envelop enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Okay, pause just for a second. So see, see, so see the conflict? If I'm not experiencing this peace and I'm not walking in my peace and I'm not experiencing the presence, but yet the word says, count it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into any counted joyful. And that's where that's where I was scratching my head, y'all. That's why I was getting a little flustered with God, because I'm like, how do you want me to do this? You do it by my peace. 
You do it by my presence, and when you do it by my peace and do it by my presence, then joy would be promoted in your life. Y'all got that? Everybody with that? Okay, okay next verse, okay, please. Hold that for a second. Hold, hold that thought right there. So that, let me tell you what some of the things I wrote. So I wrote then, so we're always going to come face to face with trials. The trial is the examination of your faith. Now, if I allow my faith to develop, it's going to develop through perseverance. And when perseverance is developed, then I will be mature, I will be complete, and I will lack nothing. So think about that. So if I'm not peaceful whenever I come into a situation, if I'm not experiencing his presence, then again, I can't experience the promotion. So therefore, I'm going to keep saying, well, why am I lacking? Why am I lacking? What am I lacking? You're lacking that peace. You, gotta, you can't be lacking of peace. We can't be lacking of his presence. And as we're walking in this thing, then eventually you're going to be promoted. And the promotion, again, let me, let me, let me, let me see, because I, I write so many things. Okay, so promotion, I'm sorry, let me backtrack. Trials, tribulations, temptations, all this stuff, it's a personal trainer. You see people hire personal trainers all the time. Well, not, I mean, I mean, you know, not me because, you know, uh, I can't afford it. <laughs> so, and I'm good, you know, but, uh, but, uh, but that's what these things are. There are spiritual personal trainers and watch this. And I, I, I don't know. I heard it. I heard it either from a coach or I heard it from a player but they say that a personal trainer doesn't care about your emotions. All they care about is your discipline and the results of that discipline. Do I need to say that again? So, so, so a personal trainer, he's there. so when the Holy Ghost has come, he's not so much worried about your emotions because he knows your emotions are like this. But the word is this, steady. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to get you disciplined, get you ready for the next level, get you ready for the next level of your faith, get you ready for the next level of your peace, because all of this is step by step by step by step. Just like a high schooler. I've seen a lot of high schooler football players. They will hire a personal trainer so that they can be ready for the next level of play college. And then from college to the pros. Well, that's what God's trying to do with us in the spirit. Amen. He's trying to take you from high school to college, from college to the professional level. So now you got to decide where am I in this whole level thing? Where's your peace in this whole thing? Where's your walk with God in this whole thing? And it's not condemnation. I'm just telling you this. This is came out of my own personal reflections because I was just frustrated. Because I want peace. And it don't matter if the Prince of Peace have already erupted the whole situation. I should be able to walk in there with the kingdom of God in me and step in some situation with the Prince of Peace. I got my boy with me. I'm not, not in over disrespect, Father. <laughs> but I got my Jesus with me. I got my peace with me. Amen. I got my security with me. Amen. And I should not. I should not be unrattled. Right, Pastor? Am I, am I, is, that, is that correct? I should not be unrattled if I'm focused on my peace. And it's the same thing with all of us. But if the enemy or the prince of the power of the air gets me to lose my focus, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be more apt to take a shortcut to anger, to my emotions. Emotions can be a shortcut. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Man, that's good. Don't let your emotions be the, 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 the sign that you say, follow this way, follow this way, follow this way. No, not your emotions. It's the word. Listen to your personal trainer called the Holy Ghost. Amen. And let him instruct you on the, the, the aspects of the kingdom, the aspects of the word, the aspects of how we're going to live this Christian life here on this earth and operate your Jesus peace. Amen. Okay, okay, next verse, please. 
But let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work Mm -hmm. so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, Mm -hmm. lacking in nothing. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, I know pastor talked about this. I've talked about this before, but I love this scripture because it says if I allow endurance and I allow steadfastness and I allow patience to have its full play then what y'all what's going to happen you're going to develop develop. and not just develop but be fully developed and and I'm just going to ask because in that area of peace right now I may be somewhat underdeveloped but I'm going to be developed and I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit and allow the word to develop me. What about you? Where are you underdeveloped? And are you willing? That's the key. That's the key. Because see, I can say, say yeah in my mind. I can say yeah with my mouth, but my yeah need to become an action verb. And, and, and when the Holy Spirit acts, I surrender. That's the verb. I'm going to surrender. Amen. Am I right or am I wrong, church? And this and, and, and because here's the thing, here's the thing. And pastor keeps saying it. And I do believe I really believe that it, I don't know what's going to happen in this 2018. But I know I'm expecting some things, number one. But also watch this. Donald Trump, you know, and and, and that's got to be a sure sign right there that once they move the embassy to Jerusalem, that's got to be a sure sign right there that God is getting ready to do something on the earth. And watch this. And I want to be ready. I want to be mature enough. Well, mama, can I have the keys to no? you're not going to drive my car. Why? Number one, son, you ain't got a license. (laughs) <laughs> you're you're not old enough and then watch this or if you're old enough and knowing my child like I know my child per se son I know you're gonna get on the road and you're gonna get with your friends and y'all turn up the radio and y'all be beep bop and no 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 you're just not mature enough yet let that not let not the father just look down and say man I sure would love to pour out my spirit on that guy but whew, He's just not mature. He can't handle it. And what? Thank you, Lord. And all of us have that level where I'm sure God is looking on all of us and saying, I just don't think Willie's ready for that one yet. He ain't got his peace yet. He's still call, talking kind of crazy on sometimes. He, he's still acting up, you know, with his attitude sometimes. Ah, let's just let's just let it. Let us soak for a little bit. Let's see what he's going to do on the next one. And so he sets up another trial. He sets up another temptation. He sets up another situation, allowing the prince of the power of the air to go before me. And he knows that I'm going to walk into that thing. And now let's see if he got his Jesus peace. Amen. <gasps> That's good. Like, did, you, did you see that, Michael? <laughs> did you see what he did? That's my boy. That is my, hey, that's my boy right there. And that, I I believe that's how he does it. Boy, that's my girl. Look, 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 did you, did you just see what my girl Rachel just did right there? Did you see what Miss Linda did right there? You know she wanted to bust her husband upside the head, but she just gave him a hug and a kiss anyways. It's all good, Linda. I know what time it is. <laughs> but anyways, but, but I mean, but isn't that so cool how he just looks at each of other, one of us and he's just like, yeah. And when he shakes his head, yeah. Go, hey, go and give him a promotion. Go, go and send it to him. Give him a little bit more. Amen. I mean, I, 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 I believe that's just how that's just how it works. Amen. Amen. Anybody receive that? Come on now. 
That's, that's, just, that's just how it works, okay? But, but the thing about it is, but you, we have to allow these things to play out. We have to allow the word of God to fully play itself out in our lives. See, if, thank you, Holy Ghost, if I take a shortcut, then I'm cutting the word. If I take a shortcut, then I'm cutting my peace. If I take a shortcut, like I said, you're cutting the presence. So are you cutting into your blessings? And then you lift up your hand and say, well, Lord, I want to be blessed. Well, Lord, say, I can't bless you because you keep switchblading me. You keep pulling out that machete and you keep cutting me up. I ain't going to go marry no person with no machete. So he just put down your knife, put down your blade, put down your machetes. Amen. Me too. Because, Lord, you know, boy, if I get that, that, that attitude get up on me, I'm going to start cutting them left and right. You know, kung fu, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Bruce Lee and them. <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyways, y'all know I get in my own world real quick. But anyways, drop the blades and quit cutting them. Because every time we take the shortcut, every time I take the shortcut, and I'd rather throw an attitude than throw gratitude. Throw, you know, a blessing instead of, you know, busting them upside the head, you know, or wanting to send them to moon like pastor would say. And, 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 and it's these little things because sometimes it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It ain't always sometimes that big stuff. Sometimes it's just the little fine things that he's trying to find too. Because sometimes all my sister had to do is just turn that thing just a little. Oh, right there, right there. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't turn it no more. Don't turn it no more. Right there. Come on back, girl. Let's watch these cartoons. Sometimes it takes just a little, just a little twist, just a little turn. And there you go. Amen. Okay, 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 okay. Next verse, please. All right, Rachel. That's okay. <laughs> I know, I know. Busy, busy, busy person. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given him. So see, so that just takes, as Pastor always said, there really is no condemnation. There is conviction, big difference. But sometimes the enemy would get us to convolute the two and we can't decipher conviction from condemnation. We mix it up and we drink it like it's some kind of elixir or something. But it, it, it says it right here. If any of you are what? Deficient. And what? Wisdom. See, there's the provision. Because he says, if you lack wisdom, ask. So if you lack, ask and what he's going to do and then he's going to give it. He's going to give it. He's willingly going to give if we lack wisdom. Lord, I'm just right now want to explode and just knock this joker upside his head. Lord, please give me some wisdom right now. Please give me some peace right now. Help me to change my focus right now. And again, I know some of y'all don't talk like that, but I mean, that, that's, just, that's just Willie's world, you know, <laughs> the world of Willie, you know, that's where I'm at. But I mean it, and I mean it with sincerity, because I really want to change. Amen. And let me tell you what, what really even more kicked this whole thing off. I had two conversations over uh, uh, this past Sunday. I talked with one of our sisters, one of the mothers, and and uh, kept telling me, you know, son, it's going to be worth it. You just keep on pressing, keep on pressing. It's going to be worth it. And then another brother, which uh, I spoke with, and he just said just a few little nuggets. And that just kind of started lifting that burden because I kept wanting to know, wanting to know, wanting to know. And there the wisdom was because I asked for it. And when I asked, I received it. Amen. And I received it generously. I received it liberally. There wasn't no fault finding. There wasn't no convicting. There was all, oh, you know, you're just crazy, boy. It wasn't no condemnation because whom the son sets free is free indeed. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
Amen. So if I give in the spirit, then I can receive in this spirit. Amen. As pastor gives to us in that spirit, we receive in that spirit and we receive it freely. We receive it generously and we receive it in abundance. Amen. But all of this all wraps up, wrapped up in peace, wrapped up in Emmanuel. It's, it's where it stems from. Thank God for that little baby. Amen. Because where would we be if he had not been born? I don't, I don't, I don't even know. I want to even think about, think about that. So I wrote here, whenever I'm agitated, whenever I'm upset, and I have another thing of talking about biting, you know, when I'm getting bitten in my spirit, when I'm being, uh, 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 let me see, bitten, when I'm being, uh, uh, there's a, that, that abrasion in my flesh. Whenever there's that abrasion of my flesh, focus my faith. Focus on peace. Change the focus. Because you know what? If I get bitten in the natural, that thing hurts. Sometimes we can get bit in the spirit, amen? And it hurts. Offend, when you're offended, it hurts. You're like, mm. Why'd you, why'd, you, why'd you bite me? You know? And then, you know, the, and the natural response is, if you bite me, I'll... Okay. How many biters? Come on now. Anybody have ever bitten before? Okay, 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 okay. So all, <laughs> so all of this is just, and, and, and I, I think that's just pretty much what I wanted to say, Pastor, but all of this, it just came out of my frustration, but I believe that God had given me the answer, and the answer is peace, focused on peace, no shortcuts, focused on his presence, and every time I do this and accomplish what need to be done while I'm in the situation, there comes a promotion. That's right. So I would say in 2018, look for the promotion. Be about the promotion. Not about the shortcuts. Not about this, that, or the other. Not about cutting and chopping because again, remember, it's the prince of the power of the air that's going before us trying to sway you Sway us all from our peace. Sway us all from his presence, amen. Sway us all so that we can take shortcuts. Mm -mm. So I'm gonna bow my head, I'm gonna just pray. And I, I just hope, I hope that y'all got something out of that, amen. amen. I, really, I really do because I mean, that, that's just straight up from my heart and from where I'm at in my spiritual walk and growth and other things with the Lord. But let, let me pray. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just want to thank you. And uh, Lord, I know it wasn't probably the most exciting sermon, but I think it was very, it's a very practical sermon, Lord. And hopefully the practicality of this word, Father, inspired all of us, Lord, to just say, first of all, thank you for Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, Lord, that you are the Prince of Peace, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that if we focus on your peace and walk in your presence, whenever we occur these negative situations, these negative atmospheres, Father God, your word would kick in, your peace can kick in, your joy can kick in, worship can kick in, and Lord, we can begin to experience promotions in the faith, Father God. So Lord, I pray, Father God, for each and every person represented here, Father God, Lord, I believe that you're wanting all of us to be mature and complete and lacking nothing according to your word, Father. 
But in order for that to, to happen, we're going to have to encounter trials. We're going to have to encounter tribulations. We're going to have to encounter situations that are not easy or not feel good, Father. Because that's the only way a student is promoted is through testing. We're all students of your word, Father. That's what we desire to be. That's who we are. We are students of your word, Father. And we just ask, Lord, let your word have full play in our lives, Father. Lord, help us to walk, Father God, like the psalm said. Let us walk, Father God, as you guide us and direct us. And whenever we do make a mistake or whenever we do fall, we know, Lord, that your arm is right there outstretched, ready to pick us up, Father God, and help us to stabilize, help us to get back on our feet again, help us to, 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 when our legs are wobbly and shaky, to get them strengths back again so that we can walk the walk of faith, Father God. So Lord, again, I just pray that this message and this word, Father, would again, as it's helping me, would help all of us, Father God, and those that are listening, Lord. We ask all of these things now in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. God bless you.